In the last stream, we were working on setting up all 32 of these centrifugal separators and filling them with the maximum number of resonant integral components and flux linkage amplifiers to make them as fast as they possibly can be so that we can begin to process all of the bitumen ascent that we have into bitumen, which we then need to craft into bitumen blocks to make the bitumen singularities, which is one of 78 singularities that we need to get in order to get 47 ultimate singularities, which we need in order to craft all of the creative items to complete the creative quest line and also to complete the pack. And so it's been a couple of days, maybe like four or five days since the end of the last stream. And I'm now happy to report that this has done its job. All of the bitumen ascent has been processed. That's way more than we need. If we go back over to our system here, we only need 141,000. We've got 261,000. That's because we intended to have this done in one day. Again, it's been like four days now. And so much more has been processed than I initially anticipated. But that is really only good news for us. Over here at the end of the last episode, we also placed down all of these quantum compressors. And at the end of the last episode, I had item pipes here and I had compacting drawers on top of those item pipes, moving the items down into the quantum compressors. Since the end of the last episode, I have gone ahead and made quite a lot of the singularities. These are all of the singularities that I could make a few days ago when I did all of this crafting. And these on the left here are the ones that we still have left to go. The good news is that in the two or three days since I crafted all of these singularities, we have acquired the remaining resources for the vast majority of these singularities on the left. And I think really the only ones that we don't have the items for are things again like the conduit singularity here, which we just need to do the crafting for. The conduit singularity, we should hopefully now have enough items to make. We do indeed, it's just a case of crafting all of them. The same is true with things like the salt singularity. Again, I think we mentioned that at the end of the last stream, we have all of these blocks of salt. We just need to convert them into a different block of salt because this block of salt is unfortunately not the right block. We need this block right here, which thankfully we will get even more of because this one is cheaper to make than this one. Anyway, I have replaced all of the item pipes over here with modular routers. The reason for that is just that the speed and stack upgrades for the modular routers are so much quicker and easier to make than the pipe upgrades from the pipes mod. The pipes upgrades just take so long with the smeltery, especially if you want to get those diamond upgrades, because then you have to use the blazing blood, which means getting blazes into the smeltery. And it's really a whole thing that is just very tedious. Whereas just putting nine speed upgrades and six stack upgrades, which are both incredibly easy to make is much, much faster and is also very quick and is also super easy to filter as well. Over here, it's very easy to filter the right thing that you want to pull, especially in a situation like we had at the end of the last episode where we needed to filter the block of compressed coal. And so either way, all of these are now set up and they're all ready for us to begin moving more compacting drawers over so that they can begin making the remainder of the singularities. I have been very specific to put these in order here. So if we check the recipe, for the ultimate singularity, you'll see the top left is Rotten Flesh, then Consent 10, then Cobalt. We have Rotten Flesh, Consent 10, and then Cobalt is the next one that we're missing. And so these are in the order that they appear inside of this recipe right here. So we should be able to move them one-to-one -one straight over into an ultimate crafting table once we have them all ready to go. The only other thing that I've gone ahead and done between streams is upgrade our, whoops, hello, my friend, is upgrade our reactor from Niotic to Nitro, which is just the exact same as we did before when we upgraded from Energized to Niotic. I just went ahead and crafted up all 36 of the Niotic reactor blocks, which just meant making a bunch of Nitro crystals, which again is something we've done many times before. And this approximately doubled the amount of power that we were generating from about 35,000 last time to I think close to 80,000 when it's running at a max speed with all of the other uh, redstone and coal inside of it. The reason for that is that over here, we were just not producing enough power to run all 16 of these quantum compressors because each one uses 5,000 redstone flux per tick. And with 16 of them, that's 80,000 redstone flux per tick, not including everything else that we have running like all of these centrifuges as well. Speaking of which, I have gotten rid of basically all of the bees by now. There are a couple of them still down. These were the ones that we were waiting on, but the vast majority of the bees are no longer here. Over here, you'll see it's really just awakened draconium bees now in all of these new apiaries, because again, that was really all that we were waiting on. And so 
Real quick, what I think we'll do is we'll go ahead and move 16 more compacting drawers over to this quantum compressor area to start making the next 16 singularities. And then while we wait for those to process, we can begin looking at some of the other stuff that we're going to need to make in order to finish the pack. Specifically, one of the first things I do want to work towards is the blocks of Valdanium here. These are gonna be the hardest part about making it the ultimate ingot. And then I also think we're probably going to want to focus as well on upgrading our mechanism machines here because netherite could also be another bottleneck. We do want to get the creative fluid tank first to make unlimited netherite, but we of course need to get 24,000 blocks of netherite first to be able to make that creative fluid tank. And right now we are only at 5,500. So we do have quite a ways to go on that. And so it will help us tremendously if we can get a lot more uh, netherite processed with these machines and maybe even make multiple of these machines to really get the speed going. But real quick, I'm gonna go ahead and get some more singularities cooking first. Once we have the compacting drawers, it's really just as easy as throwing these down on top of the modular routers here. And then the modular routers, of course, just start getting to work, making all of the, uh, the singularities down here at the bottom. I do like to check to make sure things are being made sometimes, depending on if we've uh, had to filter previously, like we have here, it, uh, it doesn't necessarily work. And sometimes you also have to take these out and put them back in again. And then also sometimes you have to uh, disable the, uh, the whitelist as well to make sure that that does indeed work. But I think that all of these are basically good to go. You'll see they filled up much, much faster than they did at the end of the last episode with the gold pipe upgrades. And it looks like all of those are good, perfect. So I've not got them all running. There are three here that are not being used. The reason for that is that these remaining singularities here all have some kind of work associated with them, not including cobalt here. So the wither skeleton and the wall, actually, we can move over and we should do those. The reason I didn't move those is they're not in compacting drawers. The wall is in here. Let me go ahead and take that. And the wither skeleton skulls are kind of mostly down here. We've got 93,000 down here. Let me take that. And then we've got a few more up here, which makes it a little tricky to deal with just due to the way that I've kind of set this up. But uh, if we come back over, we should be able to put wall down, let's say right about here. Never mind, that's uh, wither skeleton skulls. That's completely fine. Let's put wool here and let's go ahead and whitelist the actual wool itself. We don't want to pull the Certus Quartz crystals out. Again, sometimes you'd have to kind of take them out and put them back in if they're not working, but that should get us all of the wool singularities that we need. And then over here, we can go ahead and whitelist wither skeleton skulls over here as well, like this, place down this drawer right here. And that's gonna start taking these wither skeleton skulls and turning those into singularities as well, perfect. So we can go ahead and take wither skeleton skull and wool off the list. The ones that are left now are conduit, chorus fruit, fluix, netherite, prismarine, burn, salt, and rose gold. Uh, and actually rose gold is, uh, is done, so we're good on that one. So I think burn is good to go. We requested a bunch of burn meal. We have over 141,000 burn blocks. That's not a problem. Prismarine, I think is very close. We need just under 40,000 more prismarine. And I think we should have everything it takes to just request 40,000. We can't because we'd have a CPU big enough, but we might be able to do 38,000. Still not quite enough. I think we did this before, 37,000. Almost there, but not quite, 36,000. It's also not big enough. Let me go quickly check over here. We might have a crafting operation in progress. We do, it's the netherite, of course. I'm gonna cancel that temporarily and we'll come back to that. Netherite is gonna be a problem for us, but we'll go ahead and get some of these other ones finished first. Let me request 36,000 prismarine start. Then we've got fluix, chorus, and conduit and salt. And these ones are all gonna be done, I think, via crafting in some way, shape, or form. The chorus is a little different. The chorus here, all we have to do is just smelt the chorus fruit until we have 141,000 popped chorus fruit. This is another one of those situations where it's gonna help us tremendously if we can upgrade our advanced smelting factory to smelt as fast as possible. Right now, it can smelt very fast because it's full of speed and energy upgrades and it can do five items at a time, but as I alluded to earlier, we can take this even further if we get some of the higher tier installer cards, those being the elite and ultimate tier installer cards. For these, we need elite control circuits and reinforced alloys, and then for ultimate, we need ultimate control circuits and ultimate alloys. These are all made in a similar way to the advanced and the basic control circuits and alloys. The reinforced here is the infused alloy in a metallurgic infuser with some diamond, and then the atomic alloy is the previous tier, reinforced alloy, with some refined obsidian inside of the same metallurgic infuser. So we'll start 
with the elite installer here. Do we have any infused alloys? We've got a couple, but not really enough. So we need to make a lot more of these, which means a lot more iron and a lot more redstone. Thankfully, things that we have in abundance, our redstone is just hanging out over here. Let me take uh, maybe a few stacks of redstone. And back over at our infusing factory, we should be able to throw the redstone in, throw the iron in, and then if we quickly steal some speed and energy upgrades, we can do this and this, that's gonna make the production of infused alloys substantially faster. And then we need to just combine those with diamonds in order to turn them into the reinforced alloys. Now, unfortunately, I don't think that we can just put diamond directly in here. We can't. So unlike with the redstone where you can just put it in, the diamond, we do have to first enrich it over in our enriching factory here. Once we have the enriched diamond, we can then put that in and then we can use that to upgrade these infused alloys to these reinforced alloys. Perfect. And so if we take those back over here, we should be able to craft up at least one of these elite tier installers, although ideally we do wanna get quite a few of them. To do that, we do first have to get some basic control circuits. We do have eight already actually, which is perfect. So let me go ahead and do something like this. We'll grab a couple of those and then we'll upgrade those to the elite tier, one and two. And then that should be everything for the elite installer. And it is, nice. Back over here, we can do the exact same thing. We can shift right click this onto our machine. And we now have a smelter that can do seven items at a time. But of course we can take this one step further if we were to go ahead and make two more of these elite control circuits. If we want to upgrade those to ultimate control circuits, we now just need atomic alloys, which as we saw is refined obsidian with that reinforced alloy. Refined obsidian here is made using diamond and obsidian dust. Obsidian dust, I believe we can get by putting obsidian directly into the enrichment chamber. So if we put this in here, you'd think that it would go in the crushing factory, but for whatever reason, obsidian dust is made in the enriching factory, not in the crushing factory. Either way, back over here, we can combine that with some of that previously made enriched diamond to allow us to get some refined obsidian, which we can then use to upgrade our atomic alloys. So let's do maybe this, perfect. And again, you don't have to enrich these before you use them, but it is more efficient to enrich them before you use them. And so let me grab those reinforced alloys that we made earlier, we'll take all eight, and then back over here, what we can do is we can take this out, make sure that's empty. Again, if it's not, you can click dump to get rid of any leftover diamond or redstone that's in there. We can then go ahead and enrich these over in here. And then back over here, if we take some of these out, we can then put them in like so, and we can use that to upgrade our reinforced alloys. Nice. And we are gonna have to do this quite a bit because a lot of the recipes at the end here are mechanism recipes. The creative energy cube requires a ton of different energy cubes, which all require the atomic, the reinforced, and the infused alloys. The same is true for the creative chemical tank, and the same is also true for the creative fluid tank. So we are gonna have to do this quite a bit, and we might even look at uh, automating this at some point in today's stream so we don't have to keep manually making them over and over and over again. But for now, if we do something like this, one, two, and like this, Boom, we are just missing two more, which I have in my inventory. Let's do this and this. That's gonna get us the final two atomic alloys and it's gonna give us our first elite installer, which we can go ahead and again, install onto our infusing factory for now to upgrade it, to be able to process nine resources at a time, all at the maximum possible speed with eight speed and eight energy upgrades. And so now I'm gonna do the exact same thing, but for all of these factories to make them as fast as possible and then the plan from there, we could look at teaching our system how to smelt the chorus fruit via the AE2 system. So we could put a pattern in here saying that if you send chorus fruit, you'll get popped chorus fruit back. But given that we're limited on the size of CPU that we have, and given that our CPU is currently busy doing something else, I think what we'll probably end up doing is just moving this ME interface temporarily, grabbing the chorus root draw, bringing that over and setting up something similar to what we have over here, where we just extract all the chorus root, have it all smelted in hopefully an ultimate smelting factory, and then have all of that pop chorus root go back into its own compacting draw, which we can then move over to the singularity area once we're ready to start making those chorus root singularities. All right, so not too long later, we now have four ultimate factories and I've made some more speed and energy upgrades here to replace the ones that we moved over into our ultimate infusing factory. And now we have the exact same setup with the six stack and nine speed upgrades with a sender and puller module, moving all of the chorus route down into here. Right now though, we are gonna run into a slight issue. Uh, first of all, 
this currently has nowhere to go because we've taken away the ME interface. Second of all, even if we had the ME interface, we need to make sure that we first put down another compacting drawer to allow us to actually store all this chorus root because the last thing that we want is all of that chorus root ending up inside of our storage disks. Speaking of which, I did make one more between streams because we seem to keep filling them up. I'm not quite sure what is filling them up. I feel like most of the stuff should be going to the drawers here, but uh, either way, let me do not that. I guess we kind of want to make sure we put that down and lock it so that random stuff doesn't end up getting put in there. That makes complete sense. Let me see if I can get that back. Is that sitting over there? It is. We should be able to reach it around on this side. We totally can. Perfect. Let's do a quick one of these, of these, and of these. Perfect. And there we go. Chorus root. So now we should be able to put this down. We are definitely going to want to put at least a couple of upgrades into that to make it that little bit larger. We are kind of running out of upgrades, but at the same time, we might be able to start stealing some upgrades from some of these drawers over here if they have some spare, which they do. Nice. They're not going to need them going forward. So back over here, we can simply do something like this. Nice. And then from there, I think what we should be able to do is we should be able to kind of use this ME interface as kind of an import bus. If we set the back here to output, and we go ahead and replace this cable with an ME interface like this, then we should start to see all of that chorus root just getting pumped into the ME interface in the exact same way that it does when we pump it up into these ME interfaces, and that's gonna set it back around into the system. Cool. And so now it's just a case of letting that run until we have 141,000 popped chorus root, which hopefully shouldn't take us too, too long. So now that that is taken care of, some of these other ones here are quite simply just crafting operations. And again, whilst we could use our A2 system, there are, I think, better ways of doing that. Our Prismarine is done, which is perfect. We are missing 1,000, so I will request the last 1,000 there just to make sure we have it all. Also, if I'm not mistaken, actually, we do need to get a little bit more than 1,000. I'll go 1,300, just because we also need to have enough Prismarine blocks to make the ultimate ingots as well. And uh, once that's done, we'll then start requesting more netherite, which hopefully should be coming in faster now that we have these upgraded ultimate machines. Again, we might have to make even more of those to get all of the netherite that we're going to need in a reasonable period of time. But while we wait for that, let's look at getting some of the crafters from RF tools. These are pretty straightforward. The hardest part about them is the fact that they do require steel casing to make. And of course, steel casing is something that our system does know how to make, and thankfully it's something that we have, but we are going to need a lot more of this again if we're going to complete the pick, because I believe all of these energy cubes do require steel casing. And so it might not be a terrible idea, actually, for us to start at least by requesting maybe a stack of these machine frames here, because those are the prerequisite to making the steel casing later on in the episode. For now, though, what we should be able to do is we should be able to take one of our steel casings and upgrade that using some gold, of all things, inside of our metallurgic infuser. Gold is not really something we've used much of up until now. It's another one that's a little odd because you can't put regular gold in, in much the same way you can't put regular diamonds in, but you can put gold dust in if you crush it first. But if you're going to go through the effort of crushing it, you might as well just put it in the enriching factory first. Actually, never mind, that doesn't work. You have to put it in the gold... Uh, you have to put it in the crushing factory and then in the enriching factory if you want to get the maximum out of your gold. And then back over here, if we do this and this, that's going to get us our machine frame. Cool. So with this, we should be able to make our tier one crafter. It just requires some crafting tables, which I'm going to go ahead and make a bunch of because in order to upgrade from a tier one crafter to a tier two crafter, it is the same recipe. Two more redstone torches and two more of these crafting tables. And then again, to go to a tier three crafter, you guessed it, two more redstone torches and two more crafting tables. The benefit of this is that it can craft very, very fast and it's not limited on bytes, which is fantastic. So essentially what we should be able to do here, if we were to go ahead and get another compacting drawer, which is just some more pistons, that's fine. We are missing some wood. That's also not a problem. We can go ahead and request a few thousand more planks be made for us. And that's going to allow us to make these pistons fairly easily. And then with this, what I'm thinking here is that we could probably do with getting some more modular routers and we could probably do with getting some more stack and speed upgrades. But essentially, we're gonna have our compacting drawer. We're going to have a modular router to pull out of that compacting drawer. And then we're gonna have our crafter right about here. And in fact, we don't need two modular routers. We can do all of this, of course, with one modular router. The idea being here that, for example, let's say we want to get this salt singularity taken care of. We can go ahead and take 
the salt drawer and we can place it down right about here. The crafter here does require power. So let's go ahead and get some flux points to allow it to receive that power. And thankfully we do have our flux configurator ready to go. So we can just do this and this, perfect. Now, what we need to do is we need to get some of the puller and sender modules. We're going to pull from here and we're going to send to here. And of course I need this actually to be one further down, Isaac. Uh, actually, it's not true. I, I don't need it to be here because it's a Mark II polar module, but you know what? We'll put it there. Perfect. These don't need to be Mark II polar modules to be fair, but either way, this is going to start sending the salt over to here. Now we do need to filter this polar module to specifically pull salt, not the block version of salt. And so hopefully that's going to be in here. It is. And of course we do want that to be a lot faster. The stack upgrades we've got quite a lot of in our inventory. The speed upgrades, thankfully, also super easy to make. And if we do this and this, it's going to start filling this up with salt, which is Perfect. And so now if we click on a recipe, we can then set the recipe, in this case, a block of salt, hit apply, and then we're good. It's gonna start making these blocks of salt. And so now the final piece of the puzzle here is for us to get another polar module and ideally another sender module. Again, Mark 1 is completely fine here because we're not going over any kind of distance. Let me just make sure that's cleared. We're gonna pull from here. Again, specifically, we're gonna pull the salt blocks. Just wanna make sure we don't pull the uh, regular salt back out. And then we're gonna send down like this. And that should start working. If we, uh, let me take, that's putting, see that seems to be pulling the wrong kind of salt, which is surprising. And we're also ending up with the mechanism salt blocks back in there. So let me try and figure this out. Let's take these out. So we have, we've got two puller modules. This one pulls from here. This one pulls from here. This one is filtered to pull regular salt. That's correct. This one here is filtered to pull the mechanism blocks of salt. That's also correct. It also has some range upgrades, which are not necessary, but don't really affect the performance. So that should, that's going to pull this into here. You know what? It might actually be better to have a second modular router for this, just because I think it's going to allow us to increase our speed and make it a bit more streamlined. So let me put this up here and then let's change this around a little bit. So let's have this polar module that pulls salt. We'll put that in up here and we'll take, gosh, there's even more junk in here that we don't need. Let me get rid of these. So up here, this polar module is going to pull salt from here. Perfect. It's then going to send that salt over into here, which I believe is our Mark II sender module. Perfect. These salt blocks shouldn't be in here. My question then is, can, I'll take, if I take all these out and put them in over here, can we potentially put regular salt blocks in here? We can, that's exactly what we want. Let me lock that drawer to the salt blocks that we're actually after and let's put all of our salt in there. Good. So now up here, this is working correctly. Down here, if we put in this sender module, this should be sending it down. And we'll take that salt out as well. That needs to be up there. And we'll make sure we get the polar module that is pulling salt blocks here. Perfect. And so now that that is set up, this is good to go. However, the benefit to this machine is not just that we can craft automatically like this. The benefit is that we can switch it from slow to fast, which does make it substantially quicker than it is. It is tanking through power now, which is not ideal, although it looks like it's stabilizing a little bit, but I really do think we're just not producing enough power over here. I did put more stuff in, but it's not pulling through, although we have a lot of power in there. So that kind of makes me think it could be a, uh, a limit problem, although the limit is disabled. So again, I feel like it should be, uh, it should be getting enough power. I'm not entirely certain why it's not. It could then be a priority thing if I set that to priority one. It's still not receiving enough power, which is very interesting indeed. But um, the good news is it's making these very fast now, which is good. And on top of that, I'm fairly certain it can go even faster if you apply the recipe to multiple slots. The default idea is that you can use this to do multiple different recipes at a time, but you'll see now that we're actually processing these faster than the modular router can even put them into the machine, which is pretty great. And down here, this is coming in nice and fast. So we could really do with pulling it even quicker into the crafter there. In regards to that, we could look at doing either another modular router or potentially a pipe as well, or maybe even more sender and uh, puller modules. I don't know if having more of these in actually moves it faster, but uh, down here, this is now full. That again is completely fine. We can go and request yet more of these tier five upgrades. If I take 10, that's way more than we can even put into this compacting drawer. Let's do something like that. And again, over here, this is now back online. And so if I were to take this pipe upgrade we made previously, we could potentially also do something like this. If we move this to the left there, and then we do 
this. We could kind of get rid of that, set this to extract, and then set this to pull. Again, we might have to specifically whitelist that to pull the salt, not the block of salt. But that should hopefully move them a little bit faster around to there and should therefore increase the speed at which we get this. And in general, that's just going to allow us to produce these salt blocks somewhat quickly. And essentially, I think we're going to have to do the exact same thing here for a couple of these other recipes, right? We're going to have to do the same thing for Fluix. We need to craft our Fluix crystals into blocks of Fluix. We then need to do the same thing with the conduits because the conduits also need crafting on a large scale as well. And the netherite is, of course, what we're going to request via our system. So it's 2,000. The max, I think we could do a little over 2,000, maybe 2,300. Not quite a 2,000, although that's probably due to our machine frames, I think, still being made. They are indeed. It says 12 left to go. Let me quickly go and check that those are indeed being made over here. They are not, and that's because we're out of starlight. But that's through no fault of our own, I think, because it is still chugging away. I think if I move this cable here, that should allow us to use one extra light well, which is going to bring the uh, liquid starlight in just that little bit faster. So it is getting there. It's just a little bit slow. At this point in time, though, the good news is we can cancel this craft because the craft is going to finish no matter what. Even if I cancel it, it's not going to take the items out of here. These will all still be made and will still be deposited into the system, which is perfect. So back over here, we should be able to go ahead and request another 2,300 netherite. Perfect. Again, we do need 24,000, and so that might take a little while, but while we wait for that, I'm going to kind of duplicate this setup right here for, at the very least, Fluix and Conduits. Okay, so I've made two more setups here that are basically identical to the first setup. Now, it turns out this is already done, which is perfect, so we don't really need any more salt blocks, and we can kind of leave this. We can call it quits. I'm going to go ahead and just take this away and move it elsewhere because otherwise we're going to keep using uh, power here for this, which we don't need to use. I'm going to put this back on the wall, and we'll take that. In fact, actually, we already have a slot free over here because our uh, Wither Skeleton Skull singularities are done. By the way, if you end up with any excess in here, you can just press eject and then you can take them out of the right hand slot, which is perfect. And so now we can do this and hopefully, unless I filtered this, which I did, and you have to turn off the whitelist there, uh, but that should now begin making the salt singularity. Cool. Over here, thankfully, we don't actually have to do this for Fluix. It turns out that uh, if you just take four Fluix, craft it into the required block and then put that block into a compacting drawer, it does the conversion. And so all we should have to do is kind of cut out the middle end and just pump directly from here into here and that's going to get us all the blocks we need again perfect over here things get a little bit trickier if we're going to try and make the conduit singularity because for the conduit singularity we have to combine two different resources and the reason it gets a little tricky is that up in the crafter here you can very quickly fill up with all one item so we could end up with a inventory that's just full of nautilus shells and then the system just won't do anything it'll get stuck so thankfully what we can do is we can go ahead and teach the recipe like so, hit apply. And then in the slots here, we need way more Nautilus shells than we do Hearts of the Sea. And so what we can do is we can do something like this, where we have all of these Nautilus shells and we have a couple of the Hearts of the Sea. And ideally you wanna make sure this is set to on to activate, basically meaning that without a redstone signal, it won't do anything. And instead, once you have all these items in, you can click this little R icon that says, remember the current items in the internal and external buffers. If you click this, you'll see now it remembers where all of the items want to be. And so if any of those items are used, for example, when we turn it back to ignored, it doesn't matter because all of the slots are locked to a given item, which means there'll always be space for both shells and hearts. And so now we can go ahead and put in our sender modules right here. Uh, this one is going to send to the left, like so. And again, we only need one of those. And then the other one is going to send to the right, like so. And that should start sending these over. It does indeed. And of course, that's going to start making the conduits, which again are sent down here. That is perfect. Again, it's not the fastest currently. That's because I haven't put my stack upgrades in there. It can be faster, of course, if we do the exact same thing we did before, where we add even more of the same recipe kind of over and over again to increase the speed at which this works. And so, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and finish this up and hopefully it won't take too long in the exact same way the salt didn't take too long either. And I'm also going to set up um, a little system to move all of the fluids we need from this drawer into this drawer. Again, we'll probably just end up using the puller and sender modules. And I'll also probably kind of repurpose this pipe, especially now that we are fully done with salt. And back over here, these are almost all now above 
47. For whatever reason, Lapis is taking a little bit longer, but the rest of these are good to go. So I'm going to pick all of these compacting doors up. We're going to put those back into whatever spot they want on the wall. I think this one here is probably also good to go. It is. We can take the wall draw bank as well and get that back into its own little spot on the wall. Over here, I assume that most of these are also done. Not quite, actually. 45, 43, 49, 49, 49, 49, and 49. Again, not quite sure why some of those are a little bit faster than others, but we can take all these away and we can begin moving over some of those other draws that are now good to go. Things like bone are good to go. Uh, Fluix is not going to be too long now. Over here, we've got an item pipe moving it over and we have this moving items down as well. And uh, also, we do need to put some upgrades in there. That is fine. I did put upgrades in this guy. So this guy's still going on the conduits. That is fine. Over here, we do still have five upgrades. So I'll do one, two, three, four, five. Five's overkill because we only need a couple to get to 140,000, especially at tier five. But hopefully this won't take too long either. Prismarine now should be done. It is indeed. And so, yeah, I think that momentarily we're going to be able to set up Conduit, Fluix, Prismarine, and Burn Singularities to start making those slowly but surely. And the only thing left that we're not going to be able to get 47 of is Netherite. We need so much Netherite, and we do not have anywhere near enough of it. Over here, it is being made kind of as fast as we can make it, but it's still not fast enough. And so we might just have to look at getting even more crushing factories, maybe more just enriching factories, because of course we can cut out the crushing factory and go straight to the enrichment chamber if we're happy to just turn our ancient debris into netherite, which I think might not be a terrible idea. Again, considering that we only need 24,000 blocks. As soon as we have 24,000 blocks, we can make the creative tank and we can use that creative tank to get unlimited netherite ingots via that creative tank going forward. And so I do think we'll probably look at getting just a couple more ultimate enriching factories to really maximize the speed at which we can process our ancient debris into netherite. All right, so not too long later, I've made nine more enrichment chambers. I've also made nine more of the four tiers of installer here so we can upgrade straight to the ultimate enriching factories. We did some calculations and I think what we're gonna do here, right now we are going the efficient way about doing things in that we're taking our ancient debris. We're running it through the crusher to triple it, and then we're running it through the enrichment chamber to turn it into netherite scrap. That does mean that we get three netherite scrap for every one ancient debris. But I don't really want to have to make all the crushers and upgrade all of those as well. And it turns out we actually don't need to be this efficient because we do have a ton of ancient debris over here. We have got 1.5 million ancient debris. And if we just run this through an enrichment chamber, we do get two netherite scrap for every one ancient debris. So in effect, we've got three million netherite scrap that we can then use to make netherite ingots, which is more than enough to make the 24,000 blocks of netherite that we need in total. Currently, we're at 6,200, so we need about 18,000 more blocks of netherite before we can make the creative tank. Crunching the numbers, if we use nine enrichment chambers, all fully upgraded with speed and energy upgrades and processing nine at a time, I think it's going to take us about an hour to get all of the netherite scrap that we need. And so essentially what I think I'm going to do, I'm probably going to move this enriching factory because this is number 10 and this is included in the calculations, but I'm going to take this one. I'm going to take all of these. And I think much like we've done over here with our centrifugal separators, I think we're just gonna set up another tower on this side and then move the ancient debris draw over and set it to just pump all of the ancient debris between all of our ultimate enriching factories and then just pump all of the netherite scrap that we get from that into the system and then we can use that to auto craft all of the netherite ingots and therefore netherite blocks that we're going to need to make the netherite singularity. Over here, I did make a, a little mistake. There were a couple of singularities that I didn't have in here and that I'd also taken off my bookmark, but they're now all being made. Those were Lumium, Enderpearls, Pig Iron, uh, Blizz, Marble, and then Burn and Fluix were on the list. Those have just been moved over. Here, we've got Salt as well. That's being moved over. Chorus is on its way slowly but surely, and the Conduit is also very close to being done as well. We're 107 out of 141,000. And of course, also Prismarine is good to go. I can take this off the wall and go and add that to its own lineup over here. Let's put it right at the front next to salt and let's make sure that this doesn't have any wool in it and of course again sometimes you gotta do this and and this cool so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and set up a little netherite scrap production system that's just a tower with some more item pipes and or modular routers depending on what is fastest 
and we'll come back after that and we'll see probably while we wait for our netherite scrap to come in about looking at getting the Valdanium blocks going so we can actually make the 232 ultimate ingots that we need to also complete the pack. All right, so not too long later, we now have 10 ultimate enriching factories. They're all being fed from the compacting drawer for ancient debris, and we have our advanced pipe upgrade pulling those out as fast as possible. Thankfully, it is fast enough to keep all of these filled up, and then each one of these just has the improved pipe upgrade uh, that we were using previously. We had them over there, so we had them in the system ready to go, and this just connects down, of course, to our main line that goes over to the drawer controller, and over here we have a compacting drawer for that uh, netherite scrap. Right now we've got 157,000, which is good. We need about 650,000 in order to make the 18,000 netherite blocks to get us to 24,000 netherite blocks in total to make eight singularities to get the creative tank. Over here, things are still chugging along and we're still going. We do have enough conduits now, so conduits are on their way. We're making the conduit singularities. Over here, that means that we're not really using these setups anymore. However, there is one more that I forgot, and that is the seared singularity. This requires uh, blocks of seared brick, and uh, for that, we're going to have to take our regular seared bricks that we do have over here and craft them into seared bricks, 141,000 of them to be precise. Thankfully, we've got enough seared brick, we just have to craft it and send it through, which we'll do using this exact same setup. And then we did do some number crunching on Chorus, and it turned out that it was gonna take about three and a half hours to get all of the popped Chorus that we needed if we just used this one smelting factory. And uh, that's all the Chorus that we need from where we're at now, not including the time that's already passed. So three and a half more hours. And so I've added a second Ultimate Smelting Factory here, set up in exactly the same way. It's pushing to the exact same ME interface. And all we've done is just set this to use a puller module that of course pulls from here and sends down to here. And so that is fully upgraded, full speed and energy. That has taken our three and a half hours down to about 1.6 hours in terms of getting all the popped Chorus fruit. And once we have that, we're basically good to go. So the netherite should come in first. The chorus fruit is gonna be the last thing that we get. I say the pop chorus fruit will come in last. The netherite that we need to make the first eight singularities will come in first. I think we're actually probably basically there on having enough pop chorus fruit to get the first eight uh, ultimate singularities, which is then going to allow us to make that creative tank. And so we'll probably look at moving the pop chorus fruit over and getting another draw down so we can start making those once we have netherite ready to go as well. But uh, real quick, let me get the seared stone going over here. That should just be a case of kind of moving this draw back over onto the wall, which is getting pretty holy at this point. But uh, then we want to grab our seared stone, which is right here, like this. And using the exact same setup we did previously, we can just reconfigure our crafter. We can put this in here. We can go ahead and I guess grab more sender and puller modules, because it looks like I've stolen the ones that were in there previously. And we'll take just a Mark one for both of these because we don't need them to be able to go long distance. This is completely fine. The puller is going to pull from the bottom and the sender is going to send to the right. Thankfully, there's no whitelisting this time because there is only one thing that it can pull. And then over here, we just need to do something like this and apply. And that should start to produce all of the seared bricks, which ideally we want it to send down into yet another compacting drawer. And that should be pretty straightforward for us to make. We just need at least one more piston. Thankfully, all of our iron and redstone drawers in our back on the wall, so that makes making those surprisingly easy. And that, in theory, should be good to go. Are you set to pull? You are, you're probably pulling uh, specifically like blocks of salt though. No, Fluix Crystal, that's fine. We'll just turn that off and hopefully, never mind. I really thought that it would only pull from the output slot here that's orange and not pull from the input slot, but for whatever reason, it seems like it does like to pull from the input slot. So I'll go ahead and I'll whitelist the blocks of seared brick, get rid of this, put this back in there and Cool, so now we need to actually get more uh, speed and stack upgrades, which we should have over in here. This is completely done with its work, and so we can do this, and we can do this to make that nice and fast. Of course, we can add even more uh, recipes to this, so we can copy the same recipe. I don't know if you can shift-click those in, actually. Can I do this? I totally can. Whether or not it's actually faster is to be seen, but it does make the whole crafting faster, and of course, we can make this faster as well. Uh, down here, this is not pulling those out, which is surprising to me. That is because this needs to be set to here. That is my bad, there we go. Okay, that should now be sending those down, and it is perfect. So we got our first thousand there, and we're almost at our second thousand. Again, we need 141,000 of these in total. So that is coming along quite nicely. And then next up, I guess we have this ultimate ingot. The ultimate ingot, thankfully, shouldn't be too difficult for us to make, ideally. Now, to make it, 
if we look at the recipe in JEI. It's basically all the same resources that we've been using to make the singularities, but just in their standard form. We can have the conduits, we have the salt blocks, we have blocks of netherite, we have blocks of silver, seal bricks, all that kind of good stuff, but just we don't have to craft them into singularity form. And the way that I think it's gonna be easiest for us to do this, somewhat awkwardly, is gonna to be to simply place it underneath our draw controller. Now that's gonna be a little awkward because it means we're gonna to have to move our storage bus. Thankfully, I don't think we really need this network cable anymore. We've not really been using our simple storage network for quite some time now. So we'll get rid of that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this cable up to here like that. And we're gonna put this down right about here. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this right here. The reason I'm gonna do that is that the ultimate crafting table is capable of pulling from the inventory above it. One thing we probably do want to look at doing is potentially using this in its auto crafting mode. To make this the auto crafting version, we do need two redstone components. These are fairly straightforward, more of these black iron slates, which we can make really as many of as we like. And then we need these redstone ingots, which are just iron and redstone. Again, we've got a ton of those lying around. So making two of these is gonna be fairly straightforward, so long as we have the luminescence. Again, very easy to do. The slightly tricky bit is these guys. We need two of these crystalline components. These are made using crystalline ingots, and these are made using lapis, diamonds, gold, iron, and nether star. But thankfully, nothing that we don't have. Lapis, diamonds, gold, uh, iron, and nether stars. If we take those and we put this back down temporarily, we should be able to just go ahead and shift click in the crystalline ingots. Nice. And we probably don't need that many of them. We just need enough to upgrade this crafting table. So if we take two of those, that should be everything for the auto crafting table. Nice. Now, down here, the idea is that the auto crafting table is able to pull from an inventory above it. And in this case, the inventory is our draw controller. So it should have access to everything that's in all of our draws. And essentially what we can do here is we can save a recipe using one of these three slots at the top. So what we're gonna do is we are going to go ahead and kind of empty our inventory out a little bit here. I'm gonna grab my draw key back. And I'm gonna grab my X back as well because I wanna make sure I have those on me at all times. But essentially, we're gonna go through the entire list of items that makes up the ultimate ingot. So all of these items here, we're gonna go through the entire list. We're gonna take them out of our inventory one by one. We're gonna place them into the ultimate crafting table. I don't think I can shift click it in via the draw controller. I'll try it because if I can, that'd be very easy. But no, it thinks I'm missing the items. That's fine. But uh, we'll go through, we'll grab like a stack of each item and we'll put that in manually. And then once we've done that, we should be able to just use the draw controller to pull all of the rest of the items in because we do need 232 of these in total. And so I'm gonna go through and uh, start again here, bookmarking these, I'm gonna move them all over. And the only thing we don't have is the Valdanium, which is what we will work on very shortly. All right, a little bit of tedium later, but we now have almost every single item here for the ultimate ingot in the ultimate crafting table. The only thing we're missing is that block of Valdanium. So we do need 232 of these ultimate ingots. And thankfully, I'm fairly confident that we have 232 of all of these items apart from the block of Valdanium. We need 232 blocks of this. To make the block of Valdanium, we need nine Valdanium ingots per block, obviously. And then to make that, we need one ingot worth of molten valdanium. It is made in the smeltery. It does require blazing blood specifically. And to make one ingot of valdanium, we need one block of molten slime steel, one block of molten hepatizin, one block of molten netherite, one block of molten signalum, and one block of molten enderium, which for whatever reason is slightly wider than the other ones here. I'm not quite sure why, but we need these five blocks of metal to make one ingot. And of course we need nine blocks of these metals to make nine ingots, and then that makes one block of Valdanium. We need to do that 232 times. So we take 232, multiply that by nine to get the number of ingots of Valdanium we need, and then we multiply that by nine again to get the number of ingots of Enderium, Signalum, Netherite, Hepatizin, and Slime Steel that we need. The number is 18,792. I'm fairly confident that we should have all of that ready to go. Can I bookmark these? I can. Let me just quickly check that we have 18,000 enderium. We do not, okay, <laughs> that needs to be fixed. Signalum, we've got loads of it, that's fine. Then we've got netherite, which we're working on. Hepatizen, we've got more than 18,000, that's fine. And slime steel, we have got 1.2 million, that's also fine. So we need to make sure we get an extra 18,000 netherite, which should be fine. We've got enough ancient debris, we just leave it running for a little longer. Enderium though, is 
a little bit of a problem. We've only got 9,000 out of the 18,000 that we need. And so I think ideally, we're gonna have to find our Enderium bee, which is gonna be tricky given the size of this box here. But uh, if we can find our Enderium bee, which is here and here, we should be able to get those back online using the Enderium bee nectar block, which is right here. Although, given that I would like to get this done fairly quickly, we might even have to look at breeding these Enderium bees together, which I assume we can do uh, with Enderium here. And I mentioned before that this is faster. This is only faster if you have a lot of bees that you can breed. It's faster if you're just breeding one set of bees to do it with the uh, the breed time speed upgrade. So let's do this, 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 and this, and something like that. That's gonna start to slowly but surely, of course, if I put some jars in there, whoops, if I put some jars in there, that's gonna start to get us more Enderium bees. And then as for the Enderium bee nectar block, this requires diamond bee nectar blocks and blocks of Enderium. I think that's actually completely fine because we do have quite a few diamond blocks. And of course, we do have quite a lot of these Enderium blocks, just not enough to get us what we need. So back over here, we should be able to get even more of these Enderium B nectar blocks and start. And much like I did with gold bees between this stream and the last stream, we can start to look at adding Enderium bees to some of these new apiaries that we have to really start to bring those in faster then they come in by default so that hopefully it's not going to take us too, too long to get the 18,000 Enderium that we need so that hopefully we can get all of the Valdanium that we're after. I think we'll look at setting the Valdanium up next episode because we also do need to get an unlimited source of Blazing Blood coming in as well. And that is going to take us a little bit of time, albeit not a crazy amount of time. Uh, this here is done. We can go ahead and check that off. Fantastic. Over here, this is also now done. Fantastic. We'll check that off as well take that out uh, over here how are we doing on the conduit singularity it's very close 36 out of 47 the prismarine is a slight problem because it turns out i did not put enough storage upgrades inside of the prismarine drawer here and so we didn't actually have that much prismarine in the drawer all of the other prismarine it turns out is actually what's clogging up my system all of these blocks of prismarine are the reason why my disk drives keep filling up and so what we should probably look to do here is get ourselves an export bus and maybe get ourselves some acceleration cards and uh, see i guess if we can't export all of the blocks of prismarine that we do have out and into this compacting drawer we could also i guess just put a cable over there and, uh, and try and export it directly to the quantum compressor but i think it's probably going to be a little easier if we just do this and this and if we grab our prismarine specifically the blocks, of course, uh, put those in here and make that hopefully as fast as is humanly possible. It shouldn't take too long for that to kind of empty out, hopefully a good number of these drives and hopefully get all of the prismarine that we have in here out of here so that we can then begin putting it back into the quantum compressor to make those singularities. Over here, the lumium is done, enderpearl is done, pig iron is done, blizz is done, marble is done, bone is done, and fluix is done. And so, back over here i think pig iron goes at the bottom i did make this chest one too long by accident here and i've since rectified that so now uh, this bottom layer is meant to be empty but uh, i believe pig iron goes there it does ender pearl goes right at the end prior to that we have marble seared stone and blizz so marble's gonna go there seared stone we don't have just yet but blizz is gonna go there fluix is gonna go up here next to netherite which again we don't have just yet but we're getting there uh, bone is gonna go up here in the top left, right about there. And then Lumium is gonna go over here. And then we've got Con Conduit, which we're still working on. We have got Chorus, which of course we're still working on. And then right next to Iron there, we have the Prismarine, which of course is coming in. And then next to Fluix is the Netherite. And then I think that's basically it. So over here, how are we doing on Netherite scrap? We've got 416,000, that's pretty close we need eighteen thousand more blocks which is a lot of bytes but you'll see that we're about two-thirds of the way there we got four hundred and eighteen thousand out of the two hundred twenty-nine thousand that we need as far as the chorus fruit goes we're at sixty-eight thousand. we need 141 thousand. but i do think we have enough chorus fruit to where we can actually make enough chorus singularities to get that creative fluid tank and so what i think we'll do now is I'm going to do a little bit of work getting these Enderium bees up and running because we do need quite a few of them. They're probably going to get clogged somewhere in one of these centrifuges that are pretty empty at this point. But I think the bees are going to get sucked out and are going to get sent down because there's no filtering. Yes, yeah, so they end up in the centrifuges like this. But I'm going to kind of breed these and get them set up so we can get enough Enderium blocks to make the ultimate singularities. And I'll do that 
whilst we wait for the remainder of the netherite to come in so we can get those eight netherite singularities. And what I also think I'll do in the meantime, whilst we wait for that netherite to come in, is I will look at getting all of the alloys required to make that creative tank. Because in order to make this, we need a ton of ultimate components, which is, of course, why we need the ultimate ingots. The black iron slates and the luminescence are super easy. The ultimate singularities, of course, we're just waiting on the netherite for that, really. And then we need to get a bunch of ultimate, elite, advanced, and basic fluid tanks. And so I'll also look at crafting all of the alloys that we need for all of those tanks so that hopefully, as soon as the netherite is done, we can hopefully, very quickly, get eight netherite singularities. And then before the end of today's episode, it will be good if we could get that creative tank so that next time we can just jump right in and get netherite automated so that we can hopefully in the next episode wrap things up and maybe craft all of the remaining creative items all right so we have all the endearian bees up and running they are pollinating on their endearian bee nectar block and they're going to produce us all of the remaining endearium that we need for the ultimate ingot our netherite scrap is very close to being done. We're at 643,000. We need 648, I think, to be precise. We're very, very close on that. Over here, our seared brick draw is very close to being done as well. We're at 136 out of 141,000. That'll be done almost imminently. And then the popped chorus fruit is well on its way to being done as well. We're at 91,000 on the popped chorus fruit. I have gone ahead and made basically all the components for the creative tank essentially what i've done is i started by making a stack of basic fluid tanks i then crafted uh, almost all of them into advanced fluid tanks i then crafted uh, like 44 of them into elite fluid tanks and then 28 into ultimate fluid tanks because that is what we need for this recipe here it's ultimate fluid tanks all the way around the outside elite fluid tanks after that then advanced and then it basic in the middle you only need four of those in total i just went through and crafted a ton of all of the different kinds of alloys to get those tanks unfortunately i don't think we're gonna be able to make this today because it does require 32 ultimate ingots and i don't think we're gonna be able to get 32 blocks of valdenium without setting up an automatic blazing blood uh, setup that's going to allow us to automatically generate blazing blood so we can make these automatically which of course is going to be the plan for next episode and so right now we are done on the netherite scrap i'm going to leave it going for the time being but i'll also go ahead and request all of the blocks of netherite that we need now in order to do this i actually think it's probably one of those situations again where it might be faster to use the crafter because in order to get all of the the blocks of netherite if i just go and request eighteen thousand netherite blocks i have a feeling that we're not gonna have enough disk space for that although yeah, we don't. We would have to do it in like four batches. So we'd have to do like uh, 4,250 or something and then start that. And we'd have to do that, you know, three more times to get that taken care of. That might not be too bad. But at the same time, what I'll probably do instead, if we just cancel that, uh, we can just go ahead and grab the gold draw and the netherite draw and hook them up to the conduit system we were using before to allow us to, uh, to feed this down. Alternatively, one thing that could work that I've not, contemplated actually is i do wonder if we were to go ahead and encode this recipe a few more times right now we do have this recipe down once i do wonder if i encode that recipe a couple of times and i put those into multiple different crafters does the applied energistic system use them all because right now it's just this crafter here if i put one in this crafter and this crafter and this crafter and this crafter i do wonder if this then uses all of it. What have I taken out? I've taken out wood. Let me make sure the wood goes back in. And let's take out fire charges for now. I don't think we're going to need fire charges uh, going forward now. But if I put that in there and I go ahead and request those blocks of netherite again, let's say I wanted 4,250, is that going to use all of the crafters? It totally is. Almost. <laughs> I think at this point, we are once again limited by the number of co-processing units we have, so we don't have enough to use all of these. But that definitely is pretty fast in the speed at which it's going and so it might not be a terrible idea to request that four times over that's probably fine especially given that we're going to be limited on how fast the quantum compressor can kind of accept that netherite anyway so i think that should be completely fine so next time chat we'll come back i think the prismarine should be well on its way to being done actually no again for some reason you gotta take these out and put them back in whenever you replace the block above it but that's fine uh, but we're getting that very very slowly but surely we are getting close to where we need to be the chorus route 
We'll get there within the next like half hour or so. That should be fine. The netherite, we're going to obviously set up using the creative fluid tank. But next time we'll come back, we'll start by getting hopefully all 232 of the ultimate ingots once we've got ourselves all of the Valdanium that we need, which again, hopefully shouldn't take us too, too long. The Enderium should be coming in uh, slowly but surely. We might have to put a few more draws down because we are backing up on some of these centrifuges here, which is not going to help matters. But we'll come back. We will get probably a much, much bigger smeltery to allow us to make a ton of Valdanium, hopefully very quickly. We'll get the ultimate ingots made. We'll get the creative fluid tank. We'll make our first ultimate singularities. And hopefully in the next episode, we'll also look at crafting all of the creative items and completing the pack. But of course, that is a problem for future Isaac. For now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of Sky Bees 2. There.